Hello everyone and welcome back to Cause Streams TV. I am Cause as always and today we got to do some more mythic raid testing but this time we're testing some of the later bosses in the raid and only at 610 eye level that is heroic geared characters doing some of the last bosses in the raid. Today we got to try out the Silken Core which consisted of two bosses Anubarash and Kind Spinner Takaj. And then we also got to try out Princess Caveza, which both of these bosses are actually some of my favorites so far in the raid, even though we didn't really get to test them very significantly because they were really hard right off the bat. So let's jump in and talk about the Silken Court. That was the first boss we got to try. This is the second last boss of the raid, so it is expected to be a challenge. Boy, did it deliver. I still think the additions to this fight are amazing. I think the changes they made make sense, and I am really looking forward to getting more gear when this goes live and trying this boss out a little bit. The major change now is that you get this thing called Whispers of Paranoia or Whispers of Rage. So we split up the group. Half of the raid goes on Takaj. The other half of the raid went on Anubarash. Right on pull, there's, there's these big AoE circles around them. Takaj has the Shadow Style Circle, and Anubarash has the Fire Style Circle. And that actually gives you an AoE debuff around you every mechanic in this boss basically drops moat so the green aoe circles come out and then when they explode they leave a moat on the ground the players on the shadow side with the paranoia leave a shadowy purple type of orb while the people on the rage side with the nubarash leave a fiery type of orb and all that you have to do is when Takaz jumps away you run through one of the fire moats with the opposite debuff similar to razageth with the positive and negative apex the difference here is that if you run through it's an instant death now i don't know if in mythic razageth Gash, that was the same thing i never got to play mythic Rassic Gash, but exen same thing if you run through each other it's an instant death so we were kind of had one group run around the outside the other group ran around the inside and we soaked the moats soaking more than one moat usually killed the player immediately even as a tank i was taking significant damage right and then the other new the other mechanic now for the webs i believe instead of ha requiring two webs to stop a Nubarash from charging it requires three we never made it that far because there is so much happening in this fight and of course you still have to deal with with the scarabs that spawn and chase down players from a tank point of view i was taking to cash and she has an ability called poison bolt this bolt casts five times consecutively really early into the fight and then that continues on through the rest of the fight this ability was chunking me from so much from the moment i took the debuff and the boss dashed away i didn't have enough time to pick up a moat and then get to the boss and death strike i was ticking away so fast so you have to, you have to kind of play with it depending on the tank you're playing as a death knight what i did for the first five casts i popped a mess anti-magic shell and that mitigated all of them it didn't give me a dot or anything which made it easier for that when that phase switched i can run i could pick up a mode i can get to the boss and i can death strike continue on right i did kind of put something into the feedback on that fight because i think that is little crazy that it hits for so much but my assumption and what we figured out by the end of the raid is that what should happen is the entire group should swap bosses so when Takash jumps away you go and soak your moat and switch the boss that you're on right so that way the poison bolts start hitting the other boss i think it's still doable to stay on the same boss but you will need some externals to stay alive definitely will require more testing and tuning i think they should lower the cast time on the poison bolt and have it happen less often or lower the amount of damage the dot leaves you because right now it's a little ridiculous but again we're only tuned to 610 i think this fight is going to be fantastic it has a little bit of everything that you'd want but does require significant coordination to get through there is a lot happening many people need to co cooperate together and we didn't even see phase to the fight yet where you have to dispel the debuffs from three players onto Takaj in the middle of the room we didn't even get there so I think because we're at 610 and this is supposed to be a very challenging boss which I believe it is it's going to be a lot of fun there's there's so many different things you can do you get to really experience the fight even as a tank like, like I said trying to survive the poison bolt you have to use your defensives you have to tank swap maybe but how do you do that safely without running into another player right unfortunately we couldn't test it as far as we would want to but again you're at heroic gear item level going into the second last boss on a mythic raid in my opinion everything was visible you can make out what's going on the green circles are visible the webs on the ground are visible the dashes are visible i think it made sense even the moats are easy to see the fire and the shadow orbs stand out significantly so it's easy to pick them up and run through them so this boss will take a lot of coordination for the raid but for a second last boss i think they're on the right track so we'll see how this comes out in live and i think it's gonna be a little easier because we should be more around the 620 615 to 620 item level when we get there which is about five to 10 item levels higher than what we're testing at.
And the next boss we got to t test is Nexus Princess Caveza. I absolutely love this boss. It has everything that you could ask for. It's all telegraphed well. There's something to do for tanks when it comes to positioning. People getting pulled around like crazy. Everyone has to deal with ads. It, again, it's going to take some coordination, but I think they did a fantastic job. One of the things that changes in Mythic is now there's death masks. And what the death mask is, is that the ads that you spawn around the room, they now have a red glow around them. Or if you're targeted, they have a red laser beam. And what The one thing I'd like to see change is that everyone can see which ads have the red laser beam go through them the cloud around the ad is actually very difficult to see depending on your graphic setting depending on where you are in the room it's really you can't tell that that is the ad that has the death mask on it you only get so many and the point of the death math is you want to charge the charge it through the boss so when it spawns the player who is targeted with the ad that has death mask charges it through the boss and what happens with the death mask after princess cabeza uh, soaks it and turns into a death cloak is that any remaining ad with the mask explode for high amounts of damage so the point is to give give Caveza those masks so that way you can survive going into the intermission phase keep in mind though every time you give Caveza one of those death masks her damage goes up by 10 percent every time right and she inflicts additional shadow damage to the entire raids so it is possible maybe to wait till the final one and send all three death masks through the boss but keep in mind the raid has to be mindful of where they are the tactic we use i think is a little unorthodox our point was to make sure that we make the mechanic go through the boss so we can test it to make sure it's working our strat may have been a little different but it did work we were able to actually get into the intermission and see what was going on overall i think this boss is great the amount of damage the tank buster does is a significant amount but it is survivable ams once again just completely mitigates the initial hits that you take and then you just survive the dot with death strike the one thing about this boss is being mindful of where the other portals are placed right because as the ads dash through someone you want to be mindful of where you're moving the boss as the tank because one will spawn right where the boss is so you want to move the boss out so that way they pull from the different portals kind of keeps you in the center and you can keep dpsing if you're a ranged or you, if you're a melee you kind of have the ability to keep hitting the boss because that's where the boss would be my thoughts on this fight one of those last bosses that you're going to be doing either you go to brood twister or you go to princess caveza and again because it's the maybe the third or fourth last boss it is tuned appropriately for its position in the raid and then the one thing that continues to happen in this fight the right after you're targeted by the phantoms you get the queen's bane debuff and that debuff leaves dark viscera and what the viscera does is three orbs shoot out of you in a straight line now the cool thing is they've added a very visual graphic where you can actually see the three lines coming out of you and what direction those orbs will be going in which i think is, is a fantastic addition to the fight i don't think this existed when we did the heroic testing so thumbs up to that one well done and then again if you get hit one of the by one of the orbs coming out of you you get the same debuff and then you launch orbs as well like this can get this fight can get insane very quickly as the more people People get hit the more of these orbs go flying everywhere the less you have to be able to dodge because the orbs erupt from the players as you're getting pulled into the nether rifts right there is a lot happening in this fight but i think for its position in the raid it is in a fantastic spot it's very fun to tank primary thing is the tank debuff which you can survive and then it's just positioning the boss so it's going to be a fun fight to have to deal with you can also just leave the boss in the middle of the room and expect other players to dash the phantoms through it correctly and then of course you have your intermission phase where you have the beams you have to run around and, and avoid the pie slices these were some of my favorite bosses to test in heroic i absolutely loved the silicon court and i absolutely loved the princess caveza it felt so good and flowed so well silicon court has so many mechanics and we've only seen a sliver of them in mythic so i'm looking forward to getting there when it gets live and having the gear to really push that boss a little bit i could see that being a boss that takes a significant amount of pulls to down princess caveza will be a coordinating thing as, as soon as you get the coordination and the dance down that fight is gonna that boss will drop very quickly another one i'm looking forward to overall these are still some of my favorite bosses in the raid and i am looking forward to when the war within comes out and we get to play these on live and see what the tuning looks like how much did it change they add more mechanics take away mechanics i'm really looking forward to that so this was the final raid testing as the last boss is not going to be tested if you're looking for more of my videos i'll put a description down below or in the top right of your screen there'll be a link like that check out some more videos if you haven't yet please like and subscribe it goes a long way it helps me get to that 1000 subscribers subscriber mark that i'm looking for other than that let me know if you've hit up the beta and what you think of some of the bosses hit me up in the, in the comments below and until next time have a good one everyone peace out soaking more than one op soaking more than one mope